Japan is a country of forests. About 70% of it is forested. Since ancient times, people have built structures out of wood from these forests. As times changed, concrete or steel structures became more common. But the skills, techniques, and knowledge regarding wooden architecture were passed down from craftsperson to craftsperson. The nomination includes 17 techniques to conserve all parts of wooden architecture, from the exteriors to the interior parts, and to hand such structures down to the next generation, as well as knowledge of topics, such as the sustainable use of forests and natural materials. Japan has much rain, snow and humidity, making wood damage easily and posing a risk to wooden structures. It is because all 17 techniques have been transmitted that wooden cultural heritage representative of Japan have remained beautiful for centuries, despite the climate. Japanese people can understand their history and culture through this heritage. Their skills and techniques have not only conserved and restored the wooden structures, but also maintained the cultural identity of the Japanese people. Roofs are the most important components that protect wooden structures. But they're exposed to rain and become worn easily, and they must undergo periodic repairs. Kawara tile roofing began in Japan about 1400 years ago with the introduction of Buddhism. It has been used for roofs of temples, shrines, castles, and other stately structures, and eventually spread to roofs of merchant houses. High-quality kawara roofing tiles can last more than a thousand years, but exchanging broken tiles, for example, requires experience and a high degree of skill to arrange the new and old tiles beautifully in a way that prevents rain from getting in. Roofing with Japanese cypress bark or wooden shingles has been done for more than a thousand years. As materials that create refined roofs with elegant curves, these shingles have been used to roof houses of nobles and for religious structures. Craftspersons laid the cypress bark or wooden shingles down so they overlap neatly and nail them down rhythmically and quickly, using bamboo nails they moisten in their mouths. Thatching is a technique that uses plants to create roofs. In Japan, it was used for the roofs of ordinary houses. Because thatched roofs create a warm and tranquil atmosphere, they were often used for tea houses. In agricultural villages in the mountains, local residents used to work together to thatch roofs. But they also went to other regions to earn money and polish their skills competing against rivals. The regional variations, depending on climate, have created various landscapes distinct to each region. Traditional woodworking techniques for structures requires craftspersons to construct magnificent structures with limited resources. Instead of easily replacing parts, craftspersons replace only the damaged parts to restore structures. To create joinery such as window frames and sliding doors, craftspersons must choose the right materials and do precise work, and they must have the skills to use a wide variety of tools. To create sturdy yet beautiful walls by mixing soil with water and rice straw requires craftspersons to know how to mix those materials and to have enough experience. Tatami a traditional reed mats used to pad floors of houses in Japan. Layers of rice straw are covered by woven reeds and decorative cloth is used to protect the outer edges. Making the designs of this cloth line up no matter how big the room is requires craftspersons to have a high degree of skill. 
Structures, including religious ones, are sometimes painted or decorated. This not only decorates structures, but it also protects them. To take both these things into consideration and make structures remain beautiful for long requires craftspersons to have studied the right techniques. Rooms for hosting guests or performing ceremonies sometimes have precious paintings mounted onto joinery, ceilings or walls. To handle the fragile paper with the original painting, craftspersons must have mastered advanced techniques and have much knowledge. Restoring wooden structures requires traditional techniques, traditional materials and the craftspersons to gather them. Motokawashi are craftspersons who harvest Japanese cypress bark for roofing shingles. The stripped cypress bark is shaped into roofing shingles that typically last about 30 years. By leaving the wood cambium intact when skillfully harvesting the bark, craftspersons can harvest bark from the same tree in about 10 years, establishing a cycle of growing materials and restoring structures. Wooden roofing shingles are made of Japanese cypress or Japanese red cedar. Craftspersons must determine the best materials, know the techniques to shape the shingle properly, and have the experience to create many shingles from wooden blocks. Harvesting plants for thatch used to be done by farmers. Harvesting great quantities requires great experience. The plants can be harvested every year, but to grow good quality plants, Hay fields must be burnt and otherwise maintained. Well-maintained hay fields also have great biodiversity. Urushi lacquer is tapped from trees grown for more than 10 years and used as a finish or an adhesive. Lacquer tappers must have experience to collect large quantities of what little lacquer oozes out and to refine that into a quality finish. To use precious gold without waste and making it as thin as possible to create a beautiful layer requires craftspersons to have experience and knowledge, such as how to use haku uchigami that is made when washi paper is combined with mud, rice straw ash and other materials in a complex process. To work to ensure a stable supply of these roofing materials, finishes and plant-based materials needed for restoration, the national government established the Historic Forest Reserves Initiative. Wooden structures are conserved through the cooperation of craftspersons who practice these various techniques. In cases of more extensive repairs, it is a major event also for local residents. The restoration of a historic structure brings them joy and the entire community prays for safety during their restoration or holds a ceremony to celebrate certain stages of construction being completed. Depending on the work, local residents work with the craftspersons. The transmission of the element, therefore, has the important function of tying the local community together. These techniques that craftspersons have transmitted link the past to the future and tell Japanese people of the lives and wisdom of their ancestors. The element is part of an effective system to make the best use of delicate natural materials. Architectural craftspersons have overcome the fundamental societal change wrought by modernization, formed their own associations, and are training to refine and transmit their techniques. The national government protects such techniques as selected conservation techniques under national law and supports associations protecting them. For example, it provides subsidies or technical support for training courses or documentation. It also holds an annual fair for Japanese techniques to encourage the public to better understand the techniques and give children an opportunity to see and experience them. To transmit cultural heritage to the future, 
is to transmit possibilities to the future.